Welcome to, oh my gosh, what is our intro again? Welcome to Thoughts of the Round. There we go. Okay, it's exci- sorry everybody. Let's, let's. It has not been that long. <laughs> it has not been that long. You act like it, you know, there's, I and I take note of this, I yeah. really do. Um, when a podcast has is goes on break, they go on hiatus for like six months. Then mm. that happens from time to time. Mm. And, you know, we all have busy lives. And then they just call it a season. And maybe they just got, uh, <laughs> you know, wrapped up. Okay, here we go. Let me do the official intro and then uh, we'll get into it. <laughs> Welcome to Thoughts of the Roundtable with me, Matt Rebar. And me, Paul Louse. And that's the official intro, which is literally six words. But... You gotta keep the you gotta keep the original one in there too. That we oh no, I'm keeping the whole thing in oh, for okay. sure. Um, so I was gonna say about last week, like oh, it's been a long time, and like we both had some stuff going on, but uh, you've really had some stuff going on, and so I'm really glad you uh, are free to take some time to talk with me and our five listeners tonight. Uh... <laughs> hey, we have more than that. Not live. Nobody calls us live. We should. We still want to do a live event, but man, everything we just never line it up, and I don't know why we do that. Well, you know what's funny? I have been meaning to talk to you about this idea that I've had for a long time that I think you might approve of. Not sure how you'll feel about it. Um, I'm pretty positive. So remind me to ask you off the pod because I don't want to say it on the pod, and then like the three people who hear this are like, "Oh, this is happening," or like. You know, pressure me. And then we don't do it and get canceled on Twitter or something like that. (laughs) Yeah. Can Can I say something? I got to interrupt you, though, because it's driving Mm -hmm. me nuts. You got that nice soundproofing behind you. Yeah. And it it doesn't cover your whole wall and it's off centered and it drives me insane. Okay. So, fun fact. So, for those who are watching, we actually post these all on Starvolt Studios' YouTube page. You can always check it out. Um, I'm in my studio right now. And technically, this is not totally centered with the wall, but then the desk in front of the soundproofing is also not centered, so it's all a mess. Like I really like I need to scoot the desk over. But why so didn't you why do. didn't you get more soundproofing cover the whole wall? It's just like a little square behind you. And it looks like it looks fantastic, but it needs yeah. more. Um, well, that's because the closet got technically changed into a vocal booth. So I had actually I actually ran out of um little sound things and i to be fair i wanted to soundproof the other wall a little bit which is actually like a half diamond because i ran out of soundproofing so uh, the studio's getting there it's not totally finished but yeah it's getting there so katie and i uh we looked at a house and that you're gonna love this okay, um tell me. It, it had a pretty nice um uh, bedroom and but the mm-hmm. closet was like literally like two feet wide super super oh small God. And they put a bathroom in the other half of the closet. Like, they literally <laughs> cut, like, three-fourths of the closet off and made it into, like, this really... Think of the width of, like, the depth of the closet, okay? Mm-hmm. All right? And mm-hmm. put a toilet... Br- your knees are touching. And for a dude, when he's pooping, your knees can't be touching like that. I don't know whose yeah. idea it was. To be- but um, uh, they're like, yeah, just take just take the bathroom out. like... Do you know how hard sometimes these realtors crack me up? They're like, just take the bathroom out. Like, I'm not, you know, you know, Chip and Joanna from HGTV. You know, they smash it out in three days, it's gone. It's not my reality, but I don't know. I just wanted to go off on a tangent there for a second. Mm-hmm. No, I always think it's interesting when, like, and you see this on shows where they're going to sacrifice closet space for the bathroom or sacrifice a bathroom for closet space. And I'm like, like, I don't know. I just feel like you, you can't do better than that like can't you like i don't know like i wouldn't turn a bathroom into a closet like there's no other closets Mm -hmm. or like a dresser right i don't know you know what i found out about those uh hdv shows specifically um the chip and joanna one but also yeah that mostly that one and house hunters too i believe but um well, house hunters, the people actually already have the home picked and they have an offer and that's been accepted. That's how you get on that. So the other two homes that they show are sometimes literally like their friends' homes that they just add in. Like the homes aren't even for sale. Mm-hmm. They just kind of like have it's like, hey, I need a house to film. Can I borrow your house? So that the the magic's kind of gone. They're not picking between the house. They've already picked the house. Mm-hmm. But um specifically with um the Chip and Joanna show, I forgot what that's called. Um when they um, build their house and everything, gains, and you know how it has gaining, all raising canes. Yeah, 
you know how it has all the furniture, like all the decor and everything, like the home is furnished? Mm -hmm. You don't get any of that. None of that. Um, oh, no. You never no, do. You don't get it. You can buy it from them, but the minute they're done filming, <laughs> it's in the truck and gone. Yeah. That's and some of those things... Problem. And some of those things are like... Like, those tables are like $14,000 for some unknown oh. reason. Because it's made from, like, mystery hickory or whatever like that. I don't know. <laughs> mystery hickory. Mystery. Sounds like a detective... not Like, young adult detective novel or something. Mystery hickory. Man... Oh, that does. I just I made a brilliant podcast idea right there, Mystery Hickory. I'm writing this down because I I, I think worst comes to worst, this is the name of the episode, Mystery Hickory. Is it if mystery had, like mystery or is it mystery like I'm thinking Mister Mister E? Like I don't know, Mister E Hickory. No, it's Mister E Hickory. M R period E. There we go. Hickory. Okay, Mister E Hickory. E Hickory. <laughs> That's so good. Um. Is I, I I gotta so I've been this is totally off tangent but I just gotta bring it up. I've been watching a lot of very uh, on brand for us those though <laughs> I've been watching for some reason a lot of like documentaries about how to live in prison don't get me oh. why don't get me why you I trying just, to say something like are you currently yeah. living in prison I actually <laughs> asked my wife I actually asked my wife one time I was like if I were to go to jail what would you think it would be for and Ooh. her answer was you got too drunk at Applebee's and got disorderly. Oh. Katie coming through. That's good. I was thinking something like you were like, like, you know how they always have like the person who didn't know they were doing the crime. Like they were kind of like bamboozled or whatever. Like you that, do your taxes and you get like $78,000 back. Yeah. Or like you join a cult, but like by accident, you're not like in charge, but you get put to jail for it. Like you're like, I'm, I didn't mean to do it. Or like, you know, like those like white collar crimes. You get like somehow people, caught like up in like signatures. an illegal MLM scheme. Yes, you know? yes. 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 Yeah. Something like that. Like where you're like, I'm innocent. And it's like, oh, no, he's innocent. Apparently I would just get too disorderly at Applebee's. But anyways, <laughs> so a lot of these, well, by the way, um, I was, you know, watching this these uh, documentaries with a couple of the inmates, and they, the a couple of the guys, one guy, this it was a huge dude, and um, you know, he had the tats and everything, the no sleeves mm -hmm. and everything, and he's like, you don't understand. He goes, I'm a pretty tough dude, and it's, the guy had spent like 15 years in prison. Mm -hmm. He goes, I'm a pretty tough dude. He goes, the female inmates terrify me. Oh and yeah. He goes, they are horrifying. And so then they were talking to one, and it was this, it was this big. Like just like old white lady, just you know, so mm -hmm. un, you know, you wouldn't think anything of it. And they're like, "What would be in here?" And she goes, "Well, they call me cornbread." And they're like, "Why do they call you cornbread?" She goes, "Well, I shot my husband in, husband in the face when he was eating cornbread." I'm like, "Oh my!" God. That's really funny though. I'm sorry. Like, I mean, it's bad, but it's funny that that's her nickname. It's like a reminder. And she did and not you... care. Did not care. Yeah, I mean, my one of my favorite shows of all time is Wentworth, and it's an Australian drama about a female prison and i'm telling you man it's just the storylines are better like mm -hmm. i don't know men now, in prison are like i'm murdered i'm murdered i'm murdered and like women in prison it's like all you know it's it's just feels deeper than that so apparently what they what they used to do in the female prison is they would microwave snickers bars and melt them and then throw them on each other's faces like boiling snickers so then it would like melt and skin off their face wow isn't that crazy but anyways the more the, mm. the ending of this is a lot of them had <laughs> aliases like fake names. Mm -hmm. What would your fake name be? Like, do you have like a like a, just a name in your head like that you would use? Ooh. Well, I have a stripper name. What is? I mean, that might, that doesn't really count. But what is? Well, it? my stripper name's Tasty Delight. <laughs> Tasty, but yeah, Tasty Delight, and that comes from a movie. Have you ever actually. done it? Been a stripper? No, I have not. I don't have, have you thought before. about it? Like seriously considered it? I feel like everyone in America is constantly thinking, is my job worth it or should I go into stripping? I've but never then, thought that in my life. You've never thought that? Everyone Not I've for one thought that. But here's here's the second question. You go, should I be a stripper? The second question is, oh, wait. And that's when the, like, the reality of like, no, you just can't. <laughs> You're not going to become a stripper. Like what? Only like – it's like Tyra Banks, America's Next Top Model, right? Only like – the top five percent of strippers are gonna make money from it, right? Unless there's like, no, there's no way you actually consider like, the same you, point. I have a genuine question: Do you, are there strippers out there who actually don't make money but like enjoy the art form? I thought you could it? make quite a bit of money doing it. Oh no, you make bank. Like you can make like six figures for sure. But like my point is like 
I don't know. Like, are there people out there dancing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday shifts because they love stripping, even though they don't make money from? Oh, them? you mean they do it more for the art form than the money? Yeah. Like, are there are there strippers out there who like don't make money and do it? Like, because they're like, this is where I need to be. I'm I, sure. I, I'm sure there is. It's like starving artistry, but like. <laughs> But what what would but be your sexy. fake name if you if you did have right, to go on the name. run? What would it be? Um, well, I had a pen name for a while called Eapen, which was kind of like it was interesting because it was like I liked I and A the way those sound together, but then Eapen's like kind of like I am pen a mm-hmm. little bit, so it's like, but then it kind of sounds like that architecturist. What's the E I pen or anywho? Um, ooh, what would my alias be? Well, I have all my alter egos. I feel like the one alter ego I use the most would be Honeysuckle Ginseng. <laughs> no, you're not getting the point here. Honeysuckle, honeysuckle you're, darling. You're not gonna, no, you're not, I'm talking about like you have to go on the run for something. You're not going to like I get a fake ID and be honeysuckle. Hun- honeysuckle Ginseng. No one is going Mr. Jinsei, if, Mr. Jinsei. If I was if I was a police officer and I pulled someone over and their ID said honeysuckle ginseng, I would immediately arrest you on the okay, spot. Just for if that. we were in Portland and someone pulled over honeysuckle ginseng, it'd be another Tuesday in Portland. No, I or would like Im- Chicago or New York or L.A. Like, Cleveland, it, it might be a little suspicious. It would, it would click in my head instantly if I saw honeysuckle ginseng. Like this guy's <laughs> doing something illegal. There's something. I not just, right. I'm just thinking of like Mr. Ginseng. Please report to the front lounge, Mr. Ginseng. A honeysuckle ginseng. Oh my god. See, mine was like Morgan Clark or something stupid like that. <laughs> See, that's like the dichotomy of us. That like, I mean, you know, can you ma- can you imagine if? We had to go like we did something. Had to go on the run, and I'm Morgan, and you're Honeysuckle. Like, sounds like a it sounds like a Fox drama that's going to be canceled after one season. Coming this fall, Honeysuckle and Morgan. Let's keep going down this path. Okay. If you, I don't know why this, I'm having fun with this one. If you committed a crime, or at least just say okay. you didn't, you didn't. You didn't, but you're being accused of one. It's okay. not even something violent, something monetary, mm-hmm. some tax fraud. First of all, I don't think I could ever be accused for a false crime because I am so busy. I'd ha- I have like a, I have like a constant alibi. Anywho, back to you. So you're on the run, okay? Where do you go? I feel like someplace where like the American dollar really lasts a while, right? Like, don't I just kind of like take all my money? Mm-hmm. And just boom. Like, I don't know. What's a place that like? American dollar is in their currency like a couple grand. Oh, you're leaving the country, right? Wouldn't you want? No, I mean, you have no. I can't. Okay, no, no. You can you can go anywhere. I'm saying no. This is you, okay. you can do whatever you want. But I, you know where I'm gonna go? Hmm. Atlanta. Is is Atlanta a good place to go when you're on the run? I watched. You don't understand the depths of these shows I watched, and one of them was I almost got away with it. All right, I'm thinking. I thought about this kind of thing. <laughs> Wait, what could I almost got away with it be about, and Paul? The the one thing a lot of people have said. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. They said if you're running from, you know, the police, if you're running from mm-hmm. law enforcement, you know, for whatever you're a fugitive for whatever reason, you never go to desolate, low populated areas. You go to the opposite. You go to the high populated areas. Oh yeah, that's for sure. Because the thing is, you'll stick out like a sore thumb in the low populated. But if you go to a huge city like Atlanta, you're just lost. You're lost in the shuffle, and yeah. no one will ever find you. Yeah, but like, wouldn't you want to go to a bigger city than Atlanta, like a like an L.A., New York, Chicago situation? I don't want to go to L.A. and I don't want to go to New York. So I go okay. to Atlanta. So Atlanta, okay. Just just want to confirm. No, no, no. That's a good point. I mean, I was thinking get out of the country, but yeah. I mean, if I had to leave ready. the country, if I was running mm-hmm. from the, I would probably go to Australia. Okay. Mostly I because I knew I'd probably be caught eventually, and at least I'd get to see a cool place. Mm-hmm. You know, it's uh, it's interesting that you said this whole thing about moving to cities because, like, that Netflix show, You, he moves from New York to L.A. to San Fran. So it's like, yeah, big cities. It's easier to get lost in them. That's for sure. Oh I, was God, reading... I keep saying that's for sure. I always say it. I got to stop saying it. I was oh, reading man. reading this thing about this guy who he was um, a fugitive. It was back in, this, I think, the 80s, maybe late mm-hmm. 70s. And... um. He was a fugitive, and he ran all the way to, like, northern Alaska, like, middle of nowhere, and lived in the mm-hmm. woods. And he was gone for, like, 20-some years. And out of nowhere one day, um, when he was, like, literally, like, his mid-80s or something like that, 
he showed up at the FBI office in like LA or something and turned himself in. And he goes, you guys are never going to find me. I was just getting bored up there. He goes, I'm about to die soon anyway. He goes, oh. I just thought I'd let you have this. And he like turned himself in. He goes, I won. You guys were never going to find me. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. I mean, why not? Yeah. Right? No. Um, Thinking about that, didn't Ted about... Bundy get? Didn't Ted Bundy escape jail like three times? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it must have been really easy back then. Like they were like you could probably like I don't know like how do you escape from jail? You probably just like manage to get out of your cell, and then maybe do you change clothes? Do you just kind of like roll on out of it there? It probably yeah. depends. Like it's probably obviously difficult to get out of like a maximum security. But I wonder if you can kind of squeak out of a minimum pretty easy. Mm-hmm. What about like a moderate? Is there like a moderate prison? There's a medium. A medium? Yeah. Medium security? There's yeah. low slash camps, and then there's medium high, and then like old, like the supermax. <laughs> the like Guantanamo situation. Yeah. Like the we, I think we only have one, and it's that ADX in Colorado. ADX. Why do I not know about this prison? And that's where like the uh, Boston bomber is. A couple nine eleven people are there. ADX. Um, yeah, it's like Lawrence? a supermax. Okay. Oh, um, that cartel leader is there. Here we go. Um, it was open in ninety four. It's classified as a supermax. Told you. Oh wait. So let's see how many. Do you want to see how many supermaxes there are in the United States? Yeah, I'm curious. Oh, like, that's the one I know. There's only one remaining. ADX Florence. Am I good or what? <laughs> wow. I guess Alcatraz was considered one, and then um, they've downgraded, I guess, a lot of them. The Ohio State Penitentiary, I guess, used to be a supermax, but now it's not, I guess. Oh, interesting. Really? Yeah, interesting. So, yeah, really? why have I not heard of this? Because why would you? I don't know why I've I heard of it. I don't know. There's 343 inmates confined 23 hours per day. <gasps> With facilities made to deter self-harm, they're under 24-hour supervision, carried out intensively. Oh, wow. This is fascinating to me. You there? Wow. Oh, there you go. Okay, sorry. I could literally watch this all fucking day, so I probably should, like... It's it just... This kind of stuff is really interesting to me. Yeah, no, I've been... I've been I, for some reason, I just got hooked on that lately. Also, that and, like, camping equipment reviews. Man, if you could only see my history of my recent videos you would be astonished about just the weird stuff i watch honestly yeah you're really zoned in on this i can see you're colorado simply because like (laughs) okay do you think it's located in colorado simply because like if it's on the coast like the escape might be easier so they have in the middle of like colorado in the middle kind of nowhere it's like harder to escape do you think that's kind of the deal I mean, I'm sure location's part of it, but I mean, how do you Why get out of the Rockies? Colorado? Well, you're probably chalk in the middle of the mountains. <laughs> the hell are you going to go when you get to skid out? Like I'm a mountain? Exactly. That's what I'm thinking. I like the way you said that. It was almost kind of like one of those like Netflix comedies where it's like, how the hell are you going to get out of the Rockies, girl? And it's like, <laughs> two friends lost <laughs> in the Rockies. <laughs> like, and all of a sudden there's a montage of them getting just out of the Rockies. <laughs> Oh my god! It's like a relationship. Do, do you think you would live in Rockies. prison for? Do you think you would survive in prison for a while? Okay, I have two theories on prison and me. Either I would be like unable to do it, <laughs> whether take take that as you wish, or I become like a high ranking official in some of the in the gang. I could see the latter. I'm not gonna lie, because I have like ideas and like communication skills so i feel like i'd be like the person they'd be like how do we go about selling this crack and i no, I, <laughs> and i'd be like i got a, I have a marketing plan <laughs> i could be i could I, I could i got a marketing plan but i you know what i what i think about that is i see something in your brain you're right back there i got a no i'm not plan. who markets idea, like, crack how i mean idiot. just imagine just imagine like like, I don't know if I want to do this crack. And then you come across some marketing material where it's like, feel good, feel jazzy, you, you would feel hand energetic. Out, you'd be the kind of guy who would hand out flyers for it or something. Oh, but, my God. Um, they would literally raid my bunk, and I wouldn't have it on me. But they'd be like, dude, you have to start marketing this stuff. Like, you, be like But that's how you survive in prison. Well, you got to market crack or sell it or whatever, right? He, like, here's And here's the thing. I think deep down in your head there's a switch, okay, where yeah. you could be – 
horribly ruthless to people if you wanted Ooh. to be. I feel like you could do that. I don't think I let's be honest. Personally, I know what happened to me. I would get killed the first weekend I was there. Guaranteed. <laughs> I'd do something stupid, you know. Yeah. Whatever. I wouldn't last long. I feel like you could be that just that ruthless guy that everybody was afraid of and just like get dudes to, you know, attack yeah, someone. I just think um I kind of have crazy. I'm a little crazy, right? I'm a little crazy, so it could work. I could work. Um, I gotta be honest. For being away for two months, this is probably this is really funny. Return. We've made a comeback. How did we go to? I mean, basically, the episode is about can you live in prison? So, <laughs> hey, well, I love how we we start this episode. Um, I'll spill this kind of pre-production, and Paul's like, let's not talk about. You know, socio political. Let's not talk about social justice. And here we are talking about prison. I can't. Yeah, but even... we're not talking about like we should, I guess, be talking about prison reform. We're just talking about <laughs> would you live there? Yeah, and you know, we got to, we found out that you could market crack somehow. Yeah, I guess I would be afraid to. Oh no, I can't say this. Oh my god, you could tell I'm tipsy because I'm about to like. Say what are you drinking? I, I thought that was a Red Bull. Um, no, this is um, it's paper. Or, um, so I went to Pittsburgh a couple weekends ago. And I took a four pack of this home. It's eleventh hour brewing, and it's paper birds. It's a fruited sour ale with raspberry, prickly pear, tangerine, blueberry, and lemon. Excuse me, oh my god, I'm burping everywhere. And oh my god, oh my god, and, dude, that um, sounded moist. <laughs> Anywho, um, it's really good. It kind of tastes like um, a sour, like a sherbet sour or something. So I really love it. Um, yeah, back to you. Back That's to all you, I got. Paul. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's uh, that answers that mystery hickory. Oh, man. mystery hickory, Mister oh E God. Hickory. <laughs> hey, real quick, I did pull an advice article. If you have time, we can talk about this one. It's kind of funny. Yeah, let's go through it real quick. Okay. Um, my grandparents owned a four bedroom lake house with about an acre of land about twenty five years ago. The, uh, through the years, they hosted many family events, and people visited often to get a free getaway. Did you say something? I think you cut off on my end. No, I'm good. Oh, you just burped? Okay. Uh, last year, my grandparents wanted to move into a nice old folks' home that's basically a resort. So to do that and finance the rest of their years, they sold their main condo and put this up for sale. I bought the lake house at what was a fair rate at the time. It has since gone up in value about 25%. I just finished renovations, and I fin- I listed it as an Airbnb. I got a lot of requests from family to visit, and I said, no, it's being renovated, and it's going to be an income stream and not a family vacation home. He got some pushback, but he held firm. My cousin got engaged and wants a May 2022 wedding on a specific day that has significance to them that will be over Memorial Day weekend. My cousin Jean called me and asked if they could have it at the lake house since there's a lot of land, and um, they both were there, blah, blah, blah. I told her I usually – I was anticipating renting it out. And that she can have first dibs on the days needed and sent her the link to reserve it. But then she realized this would cost her close to six grand plus deposits and service fees. So really like eight grand. And she flipped out saying this is a family event in a family house. So I shouldn't charge. She then said it would be like my wedding gift. I told her, Jean, my wedding was three years ago and you got me a set of knives, which I do like. It's not really fair to say I should give you basically six thousand dollars. Jean flipped, called me greedy and terrible, and then my parents, aunt and uncle, and one sister said I'd been greedy. My brother, who helped with the renovations, is on my side, and my grandparents said that they'd love to see a wedding there, but they sold the house with no conditions, and they won't pressure him. I've been getting a lot of flack from a couple people in the family. What do you think about this? Discounted rape. Not free, but give him a discount. Yeah. See, that was my initial thought, too, was like, okay, if you normally post it for six to eight grand, why can't you just, I don't know, like four or five? Half the funniest it. I would line. Yeah, half it. Well, this is the funniest line, though, to me, was when she goes, um, she's like, oh, it'll be your wedding gift. Give me the house for free. And the person who owns the house was like, well, three years ago at my wedding, you gave me a set of knives. So it's not really fair to say that I should give you six thousand dollars. Okay, there's a little bit more deep-seated stuff than than <laughs> I had known. Um, but, that's personally what I would do. I was, I would half it. So, yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I, I feel like this idea it's in his name. A, so it's not a family house. I hate that idea of like, well, you bought the family house. Whose name is it in? It's their house. It's not the family house. Now that being said, I love my parents. If my parents came over, you know, for sure. 
But, you know, if, like, I don't know, if my dad came over and wanted to crash in the living room for a week, I'd be like, no. No, no, no. Also, so there I, are I there that. are no obligations with family in that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. especially if already estranged a little bit. But in my situation, do, do a half off. Mm-hmm. You're good to go. Yeah, or at least something. Like, even pretend to care. Um, I think he put in the edit something like, um, like what it costs, like the mortgage or something. But like, I don't know. Like, it, it's a week out of the month. Like, yeah, I think you could get away with like three, four. You'll months. be fine. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's just so interesting though. Like the idea of like, you know, oh, you have to give it to me for free. Like, I wouldn't be like that. I feel like I'd be like, hey, can I pay to borrow your house? Because even at like. Four or five grand. That's cheaper than a lot of events. I'm trying. Venues. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think if I would ask for free, mm-hmm. and I don't think I would ever ask for free. But maybe I would ask for a little bit off. Yeah. So I'm trying so. to trying to think where I would come from personally. What I would do, mm-hmm. um, and I might not ask for anything at all. It feels kind of weird, but there you anywho, go. there's your advice of the day, of the week, whatever it is. <laughs> Get better internet. <laughs> All right, that's all I got. That's all you got. Okay, well, this was a fun little episode of Twists and Turns. Uh, learned Mystery Hickory. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm going to be using that a lot. But um, that, yeah, that's my kind of- that's my new that's my that's my new name, Mister E Hickory. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Um, we'll have to catch up soon again because I feel like we have so much more to talk about because we've been gone for a little bit. Um, so apologies for the two month hiatus. You can't you know, fit all the fun happen. in a twenty minute podcast. Things happen, we get busy, um, and we appreciate that you uh, hopefully are still around and listening. And uh, yeah, we'll be back pretty soon. So uh, peace out. Later. Later.